Hey, Coach, I, I know you, you, you'd like to build some good depth on the offensive line. Uh, you had a strong uh, freshman class coming in. Could you give us a little update on where these guys stand other than perhaps Jordan, who, who we've heard a lot about? Uh, you know, those guys that were here in the, in, the, uh, in the spring have a little bit of an advantage, obviously. Ryan Spires has done a really nice job. We started him off as a center and um, slid him out to tackle once some guys got nicked up. And he's been playing left tackle. So I, I think he's actually got the size and the strength. He's got the footwork to be able to play outside. I think he'll be a guy that we develop uh, as a tackle and as a center. Um, he's done a really good job. He's got a really good football mind. He understands concepts. Um, but it's a different world out there, right? You get put out on an island at left tackle. Um, you know, now you have to block guys like you know, Jordan Dominic, you know, one on one versus a speed rush. When you're a center, you got two guys on the side of you that are kind of, you know, um, embracing you a little bit. Here, you're out on an island. So he's played really well. Paula played well early on. Uh, he's been dinged up a little bit lately. Um, so he hasn't, uh, he hasn't gotten as many reps as the, in the last week. Uh, but he was showing some really good signs. He was, um, you know, he was playing a little bit of guard and tackle also, just trying to create depth. Mike Rankins has been in there. And done a good job you know it's tough for those guys a lot of those guys the young guys um, have such a strength deficiency <clears throat> against some of the older guys that that's really where things start to show so um, I like the group I, I think that you know you know Kate Kutsarakis came in um, and he's done a really nice job he's you know athletic big dude um, and has really fit in. He's, you know, he came in and got a little bit of a late start, but um, he's done a really nice job. So I'm happy with that group. You know, hopefully, you know, you've created enough depth with the older guys, uh, you know, with the Charlie Clocks and the Austin Smiths that we're able to uh, not have to rely too heavily on the young guys and then continue to bring them along. And then maybe mid-year, if, you know, if things happen, then you'll have a, another group of guys that you could go to. Next question is from Kelly Quinlan from Rivals. Hey, Dave, I'll ask the million dollar question here. Uh, quarterback situation, kind of where do you see things at? Are you kind of narrowed down? And then also going on the road for your first game and not having a full stadium, does that maybe change the dynamic of looking at uh, making a first time starter like uh, any of the three freshmen? Uh, yes, we are closing in on that. I think we got a pretty good idea what we want to do. I know that Coach Collins loves to talk about the quarterbacks, so he'll chime in there probably on Tuesday's press conference and bring you up to speed a little bit more. Um, you know, I think all of the guys are still continuing to get the reps. Um, we're narrowing th some things down as to some packages that guys really have to fully understand. Um, you know, th the thing about it, guys, is across the board, you know, they're still really young. I mean, you know, I, I say some things to them and I, you know, I, I look at their faces and they just look at me like, I have no idea where you're, you know, what you're talking about. Um, so the, it's, it's a continual work in progress. The great thing with these guys is they're all football guys. Um, so they don't make the same mistake twice. They're all learning. You see some really, really good throws and then you just see some head scratchers. We did some red zone stuff today and there was a couple of head scratchers in there and I was like, what are you looking at? And you know, it was like, well, this guy did that, and, it, you know, it really didn't make a lot of sense. So, um, you know, it's, it's just a work in progress. It will continue to be, um, but we're, we've got a pretty good idea of what we want to do. As far as the crowd, I think, it's, I think it's a definite advantage for a young quarterback not to have to play in front of a huge crowd, you know, with all of the, number one, all of the excitement and the aura about going into a big stadium. I don't care. You know how much I try to coach them up. They're still going to go out there and go, "Whoa, this is really cool. There's a lot of people here. It's really loud." Um, so that's one part of it. The other part of it is just from a communication standpoint, being able to hear, being able to um, see the signals, um, and not have to deal with the crowd noise as high a decimal as we would uh, when we had the ball. Especially going in in the red zone, I think that's a real advantage for for any cues, uh, especially a young guy. Next question is from Ken Segura from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Hey, Dave. If I could follow up on what Kelly was asking, I remember last year at the beginning of the year, um, you, you were using all three in, in various ways. Um, and, I, and I know you said, you know, all, a bunch of times, it, preferably you have one guy doing everything. 
Is that yeah. something you will try to avoid? And, and can, it sounds like you're maybe leaning towards George having just one guy. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately you always want to have one guy that, you know, hopefully that guy could do everything that you're asking them to do. Um, you know, can they be an active participant in the run game? That's, that's a big piece of our offense. So very rarely will you ever have a guy back there who's not a good runner or at least adequate enough to be able to pull the ball, run a little speed option, those type of things. You know, and then like we always talk about, can you get us into the right play? Can you check us the right way? Um, are you throwing the ball with accuracy and with velocity? Those are the four things that we look at. And then, you know, emotionally, are you able to handle a big stage? You know, it's that, that, that's a big thing, especially with the young guys. And, and uh, um, so ultimately, you'd like to have one guy that could do everything, that could settle you down, that you can, that you can have, um, you know, kind of solidify the group that way. But, you know, I've never really been – you know, the guy that says, hey, we have to have one guy. This is our guy. He's got to get 80% of the reps and that type of thing because it's a long year. And, you know, the, you know, going back in our history, there's been years when we've actually had to play with seven different kids at quarterback. And, you know, one guy was a receiver. One guy was a second baseman on the baseball team. You guys have all heard those stories. So, I mean, I think you have to continue to prep as many guys as you possibly can, but get those guys who are going to be able to play and play a lot on a Saturday, the requisite number of snaps that they need in practice. So really it's a practice management thing. The cool thing about the way that we do things is we're practicing on two fields and we're calling our same offense. So even if it's the second offense against the first defense, we're running our plays the way that they're named and they're all being evaluated, everything's being watched. So um, guys are getting really good reps that way. We'll start to continue to trim the fat a little bit here as we head into the end of the week and then really uh, go pedal down on Florida State. <clears throat> Coach, we have one question that came in uh, uh, to us via text message. And it's, if you okay. could talk a little bit about um, what it's like to prepare uh, for a first game of the season against a team with a new coaching staff. Uh, it's a challenge. You know, it's, um, there's, there's two different things, two different philosophies that you really have to look at. Um, we are at a little bit of an advantage because their, their defensive staff is, you know, has come from Memphis. We saw a lot of their crossover tape, both offensively and defensively, when we were at the other spot. Um, so we have a, a general familiarization with what they do. Um, so when you start doing your evaluations, you look at the Florida State tape and you look at their people and you know, where they were placing them, what kind of guys they have. Obviously, they have a, a very talented roster down there. Um, and then you go back to the Memphis tape and you say, OK, what are they schematically? Who are they? What do they want to be? You know, are they a three or a four down team? Do they play more middle close coverage? What's their blitz percentage? Um, and then the interesting thing, I think, with this group is they were very different philosophically at Memphis and at Florida State last year. Florida State, they were more of a three down defense last year so you know will there be a component of some three down stuff that they have because that's what their personnel fits maybe it's more of a mix than they normally would be so i think you have to factor all of those type of things in and then you know see on tape exactly like okay these are the players that have to be on the field um, as we make the evaluation is do they fit more of a three down or a four down scheme you know, how much man are they going to play, that type of thing. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting challenge always. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to rely on what you do, right? You have to rely on your base things, your base rules, your base runs and passes and, and play actions and screens and nakeds. And you have to be able to run that stuff versus everything that you see because – at the end of the day, they don't have to play what you think they're going to play, and very rarely do they. You know, last year we came in and we were playing South Florida, who was all four down, and the, they played 80% of the game at three down last year. So you got to be able to prepare for everything as best that you can, but rely on your base rules to get you through if something's a little bit different. All right, time for a couple more for Coach Pat Node. We'll start with one from... Kelly Quinlan from Rivals will uh, wrap up with one from Ken Segura from the AJC. So, Kelly. Dave, I was curious. We haven't talked a ton about the tight end position, and 
just you have the two Dillons and then Billy that came in and, and some walk-on guys there as well that uh, Coach Wiesahan's kind of high on. Can you just kind of talk about what their role is? I imagine it's going to be a little different. Also, with the when you have Gibbs and Jemias and all these running backs, you may, you may sacrifice the tight end at times. Well, those are good problems to have, right? I mean, having having more guys than you can than uh, you can put out there, and having to find roles for them is uh, is a good thing. Um, the the good thing with the two Dillons and Billy Ward are they that they have really good length. They're good athletic long bodies that can run the field. You know, a lot of times you have guys that are a little bit shorter, a little bit more stout little stockier, don't really stretch the field much, more fullbacky type, H-back type of guys. These guys could do a little bit of both. They're, they're good down the field. They're good, both good pass receivers. They're learning how to play college football on the fly. You know, they were kind of thrown in the mix there last year um, and handled themselves really well. Um, and then, you know, Billy is a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, thicker bodied guy. He's like almost, you know, 260 pounds. So he can really frame guys up in a run game. Um, and it's coming along in his understanding of the pass game. Uh, we are, have always been a really uh, 11 personnel heavy team and being able to move those guys around. So I think we still want to you know, have a good piece of that in our package. And a guy that's really interesting is, is Coco, who was playing center this time last year, right? And now uh, he's out there chipping and catching balls in a flat and running ISO and power. And he brings like a downhill fullbacky tight mentality he, he trimmed a tremendous amount of weight I mean you know he ate he ate uh, you know grilled chicken and salad for like four months straight to get him his weight down and really work diligently in the weight room and running and things like that so he brings a little bit different element I've really been happy with him and he actually catches the ball really well for a guy that was bending over and, and throwing it through his legs last year as a long snapper and a center um, he gives us a little punch he's really tough um, so I'm, I'm happy with that group of guys. We just, you know, just like anything else over the long haul, we're going to have to stay healthy and, and continue to create the depth that we need because you can't just get chased out of packages, right, because of personnel. You have to be able to develop depth and you have to be able to cross train the running backs, the wide outs, the tight ends on, on how to do everything in the offense, which we weren't able to do last year. I mean, guys were just kind of figuring out what to do let's say as a tight end, now they could play in the slot, they could play in the backfield, they could play attached, you know, put their hand down, you know, motion. Uh, so, you know, we're a much more varied offensively and we just got to continue to create that depth with those guys. Okay, time for one more. I'll have it from Ken Segura from the AJC. Hey Dave, I just want to ask you, like how are things looking at center? I'm, I'm guessing Mikey and, uh, and Kenny are your two candidates there. Mikey's done really good. You know, it's it's um, that position really has to control the flow of the game. Um, and, you know, if you're playing a, at a fast pace, um, he's got to be able to get up there, set the ball, make your calls, get everybody lined up, be a great communicator um, and understand concepts. And Brent's done a great job with him in just understanding where to go and, you know, how to point things and, um, you know, try to take some of the pressure off the quarterback. Um, if you are playing with young quarterbacks, it's, it's always great to have a center who's really, really bright, um, who can help with the protections and help with the front IDs and, you know, turn around and tell those young guys, hey, look, this is what it is. Are we going to make a check here? That kind of thing. Um, so they've, you know, Mikey's been really good. Will Lay's, you know, Will Lay played a lot of football for us. He's really good. He really knows, understands what he's doing in there, can run the show. So he was a backup. And then Kenny Cooper's the third guy who's played a lot of center for us, playing both guard and center. Uh, coming off of his injury from last year is, you know, the big thing with Kenny is he's very powerful. Um, and when he gets his hands on you, he, he really could clamp you. So those three guys give us really good depth there. And then Spires could bun, you know, bounce in. We got a couple of young guys that were cross training in there also. Um, but, um, you know, Minahan will get the first snaps. Uh, against the Seminoles.